company. Right, it's Sunday the 30th of September. And we're sorting through the potatoes. And the two boxes there are all for the bin, all blighted. Uh, and they're also blighted, three boxes. Cut one open for the camera, Dad. Okay. See what it looks like? I'll get this one. Right. Get the blight knife out. Blight in the meadow, eh? So there you go. Put the brightness up there. And so, wonder what, how, how big would you say these three areas are? That they were planted. Oh, they were. Each was about. The front had about 60 plants in it, 20 in each row. Across it, pup papillons had, had about the same. And we got. About 20 square metres in each, each patch, and there was three. Patches, yeah, but patches. we've lifted two patches, so 40 square metres and about 300 pounds of potatoes but probably more than half of them are binning, getting binned right. so that's so that's some that are alright there's actually there's actually a lot of potatoes here last year that came up unexpectedly and the vast majority of them aye, are actually alright there we go. Anyway. Jump in at the tunnel. That's F1. That's potentially blight on the tomato plants here. I don't know for definite. But they're all right and well, even though most of the leaves are taken off in fear that uh, they had blight, but they're the Bacati F1s over there. That's the Douglas F1s. And you can see they definitely good quality, good size. They'd actually taste quite good as well. Uh, these were the San Marzano plants. You can see them there. You can see them there, there. And they're definitely, you wouldn't eat them. I suppose you could roast them for a fry up or you know an English breakfast. If you know what is that, but uh, yeah, you wouldn't eat them like raw on a salad or what. Definitely not. They're the orange banana from the real seed company, and they they do look brilliant, and I think they definitely do make. They're very dense, they're heavy. One that looks about the same size. Orange banana, one of these, one that looks about the same size uh, as like a San Marzano. We weighed them and it was double the weight, so I think there's a lot more in an orange banana. But I'll just. The Amish paste tomatoes are in the back in there. You can see how big they are. And that's some that we took off earlier. So they're the kind of biggest, biggest and best Amish paste tomatoes. See relative to my hand, and I'm taller than four feet, so so they are quite big. Uh, like onions here too, but I'll probably string them up at some point. Uh, the Chadwick cherries, I've actually produced quite well, uh, but. They're kind of mushy texture, so although they're cherry tomatoes, they seem more like a cooking tomato in that sense, or mealy. Uh, the ruby tomatoes in the back haven't produced extremely well. A couple there. 
there's from the real seed company as well, they kind of go pink as opposed to red, there are a few there. Uh, again, quite nice but we've not had that many to try to be honest. Sun golds have definitely been good, you can see just the sort of last few remaining. They're definitely really nice but I think they're renowned for being very sweet and very kind of crisp, definitely good in salads. There's a grassy knoll that we've neglected and so the grass has grown out of it. Uh, we'll need to we'll need to restack it at some point. I'll just quickly go and show you the pile of black gold on the driveway that our friend and neighbour with cattle kindly dropped off of us. And that is a lot, that's four tractor trailer loads. I don't think the camera quite does it justice. Uh, we've got leeks there that I think for the most part were planted too late. These ones might come on, they went in a bit earlier than the ones. But they got chewed by a rabbit. By a rabbit which we subsequently trapped and didn't really have the heart to dispatch it so transported it to another location uh, There's a lot of weeds to sort of let it go to some extent and weeds are bad at the moment but some red cabbages in there as you can see there, solid red cabbages and we've got some brothel sprouts. I was hoping I might get them for Christmas, but I think they'll be bursting and ready long before Christmas. See them in there. Just in the song, but, uh, but yes, so. It's in your pile. The corn that we grew over there. You can just see it just in front of the car there. Actually. I'll run over and show you. Actually, grew well, given the start I had surprisingly well. Uh, but we put them in, and I think I put them in a little too big. So we were waiting for the last rows to be done. And here, that's about June. So we really had to wait quite a while and then when we put them in it was a really windy day you couldn't have picked a worse day they get blown over they get snapped which I don't know for definite but I think that kind of forced them to put out like multiple stems because they're getting you know they get snapped and they're trying to recover although maybe someone can tell me otherwise perhaps that's normal uh, but I mean I did hear in Gardener's Question Time in BBC Radio 4 that you're better, like there's one there, one wee one, two wee one, three wee one, you're better cutting it down and only having the plant producing one, so I should have done that, obviously I didn't, to be honest, I thought they were beyond the stage of bothering about, but there has been the odd one off it, uh, but they're not, I'm just trying on that, they're not, uh, they're tiny, really, to be honest with you. I'm putting on like tiny. But you can see there is something there. Yeah. But pollination is obviously bad with that. I think that's poor pollination where you see the cob and no kernels. Uh, that's another one. It's a little bit better. A little bit more complete, but again, very small. And really, to be honest, hardly worth bothering about. But nonetheless, I'll maybe try it again next year. The summer here last year, summer 2018, was uh, monumentously good. Uh, well, it was a record breaker, but this year's been quite bad. Uh, we took potatoes out of there, that was one of the potato places which is probably, as my dad says, closing in on 20 square metres. But I sowed ryegrass in there and you can see it just kind of up, so that a week ago, it's up a week. 
just see it all coming. So we'll see how that does, it's a green manure. But we shall see. I suppose it's interesting for others to see if they're growing corn in a similar climate. But that's all for the moment.